Hi. Today, I would like to talk about logic. Actually, I'd mainly like to show you about Logic. I'm going to use these awesome Pico 3HP little Logic modules, the Logic and A-Logic. But what we're going to play with kind of applies to pretty much all Logic modules. So please watch. You may find this interesting. So what are Logic modules and why would you want one and what will it do for you? It's something we've looked at before, but I think we really should cover again in a little more detail and specifically to give you lots of examples. Because the problem with logic modules, it's really boring to talk about them. After all, they are called logic. But if you just see what they do, I think you'll get it. I think you'll get very excited. I think you'll probably want at least one, probably more. So logic modules are some of the simplest, most misunderstood, and yet coolest things to play with in Eurorack, as they're gonna help you very massively on your quest to create interesting patterns, and from patterns, sequences. And I'll do it by combining two existing gates or control voltages and give you a brand new third pattern which you use to trigger other sounds and events. And as I've said, it's just not that fun to talk about, but logic, I can tell you, is always surprising and fun to mess around with. And with these things being so tiny, the Erica Synths thing specifically, there's kind of no excuse. And what we're gonna look at today is just basic good shiz. So what's the difference? Okay, so firstly, logic is a two-channel Boolean logic module. This means if you put two gate patterns in, you get a third pattern out. But there's two independent blocks of this, so you can have two completely different logic operations occurring in one tiny 3HP space, which is pretty sweet. The other thing is that it is a clock divider module, so you can actually hold this button down for two seconds and it becomes a clock divider, so you can then Put a clock in at the top and you'll get divisions depending on what you choose with the little button and you've got a reset input here and again this can be independent of the other side so you can have a bit of clock division a bit of logic or two logics or two clock divisions it's really useful and then pico a logic doesn't have modes like logic and it will combine the two either CVs or audios that you put into the A and B, and it will derive the sum, difference, maximum or minimum amounts of them. Um, and like I say, I mean, it really does suit using CV and audio, not gates. So you can take a couple of oscillators and just turn them into this third insane thing. We'll try that momentarily, but first let's do some logic business. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you is, is a genuine real world thing that I am experimenting with these modules to do, which is um, basically as part of my live system. Um, what I want to do is I want to start with just basic rhythms, you know, a really simple set of core rhythms, which I'm creating with this Euclidean circles module. Um, and I want to, from those signals, combine them to get extra signals out that's just a combination of what I've already done. It's like getting something for free. So I'm making these two gate patterns anyway, and I'm getting a third one that I'm going to send somewhere else. So there's just less that I have to do on a kind of moment to moment basis. But this is kind of the genius of logic. It's combining two gates to create a third one. And it means that you just do less and get more out of what you've already got going on. So let me show you. Okay, so. With the Euclidean circles module, basically I'm going to turn the little dial to the right and it's going to create patterns. It's going to create more events. And you can see where it's orange. Hopefully you can see that. That means that there's an event occurring. So what's happening is that this channel one is triggering my bass drum. But you can hear this kind of chord and that's the shapeshifter. And that chord is actually being triggered by the second channel of logic. Now what I've done is I've combined two gate patterns here, this top one and this bottom one in the top. And this top mode is AND, which means that for it to pass a signal, it needs both this top one and this bottom one to be active at the same time. It will not make a signal unless they are. And it hasn't happened yet. 
When it does happen, you will hear a hat or a kind of, I think more of a percussive sound. That. So if you're listening to this, please be listening on headphones, just to be clear. You will hear this kind of low bass sound, which is the direct trigger of this um, Euclidean circles channel. It's just going straight to that sound. But the chord, ba ba bum, ba ba bum, is this bottom channel of logic. And this doom, which is kind of a snare in the way that it's landed. And I'll make it more white noisy. This is the audio damage neuron. That is being derived by AND logic. By the way, the logic mod mode here is XOR. Now, I'm not gonna talk more about the sort of different modes, particularly because it just makes, it'll make your head and it makes my head hurt. What I'll do is I'll link to truth tables, which show you what various modes add up to. So if you've got, sometimes if the both channels are off, you'll get a signal. Sometimes if one is off and one is on, you'll get a signal. And sometimes if they're both on, you'll get a signal and variations of this. The reality, is it's very hard for me to give you a recipe and say that, you know, one logic mode is good for one thing and one's good for the other. The important thing is what I'm doing here in playtesting. And I've been swapping these around. I actually had them originally in uh, different... Ooh. I had them in the swapped. I basically had XOR in the top and AND in the bottom. But you see what I'm doing here is this is allowing me to combine these two signals in um, two different ways. I'm actually creating both my white noise snare, which you can't hear, and my chord, which you can from just these two channels. So I'm putting two things in, I'm getting four things out. And so I'm thinking about this because I'm thinking for my live system, for what I want to do to play, I want to just have pure economy. I want to be able to do the most, you know, the minimum of kind of, um, kind of setting with the Euclidean module as a starter. And I want logic to take care of the other things. And of course, these triggers don't just have to be straight up events. You could be setting off all manner of kind of complex interactions depending on how you wire it up. So, and if I do things like, um, for example, with this module, I can actually shift the, um, I can like offset the um, events. And of course that's going to create a different pattern. <laughs> And you just get all manner of different stuff because the good thing about this module is that I can have the various channels running at different rates. And that's awesome because it means you're getting phasing where um, channels interact and cross over. And because logic is a result of the way that these two channels are turning on and off at any one time, that's what's determining whether the signal comes out or not. Then that means that my signal that comes out of the logic module is gonna shift it just means more stuff free <laughs> over a long period of time. So I've got kind of time to think about other things in a live situation. Let's change the modes over. And what happens is that you see um, with this top channel on X or and the bottom one on AND, you just get less stuff. 
And I think that's actually the most useful way of thinking about the modes. And if you were going to write any notes for yourself, look through the truth tables and it's pretty easy to say that certain truth tables give you more output signals and other ones give you less. And probably the most useful way of thinking about it is just more or less. Um, you know that if you go to AND, you need two things to be active for them to make a signal, and it tends to make signals, it tends to make outputs that have less events. Um, depending on obviously what you're feeding it, but generally I find it to be the case. And OR is either, you know, one or the other can be active, so it passes both signals. So that's just going to mean more events. So you can think of things in terms of less and more. find that a useful shorthand in real world use because like I say I'm just not clever enough to think about these things in terms of like um, you know oh hey if I I just know what's gonna come out if I just create these two patterns it just doesn't work like that no one's that clever Pretty great. Okay, so just quickly, I wanted to show you it in clock divider mode with the same kind of patch, kind of. So what I've got here is this top channel of Euclidean circles going into the top section and the middle channel here going into the bottom section. And these are working as clock dividers now, still triggering the same things. And you can hear this kind of bass sound burp, burp is the second channel. The kick drum is the top one. There's white noise on the kick drum, by the way. And the clock dividers obviously give you much less output for this kind of thing. It's interesting seeing how they react to kind of unregular patterns. They work well enough. This is divide by three. This is divide by five. And I can kind of flip that around. Now they're both on the same thing. And I haven't got the resets engaged, so they're kind of going to phase. Divide by seven, nine. And then this takes us up to divide by two and four. Okay, and just to quickly show you uh, the possibilities of audio rate modulation to prove it can be done, um, I've got two Dixie 2s um, here at uh, intervals. You can hear them making kind of pretty sine waves. One, the other. But then I've got the square wave outputs going into uh, Logic, and I've got the output of Logic going through the Z2040 filter, and if I fade it up, You hear this kind of gnarly square wave. As it combines the two inputs at audio rates using logic. Can 
Manali. This is just the signal by itself. And then as you sweep them, Pretty cool. Original signal of the sine wave. So just in the same way as it will give you a kind of third um, rhythm, it will give you a third tone as well with two inputs. Um, of course, you remember it was a clock divider as well. So if I take one of these out, um, this is something we've tried before and it's very cool. Uh, so you hear the um, input. If I hold it down for a two seconds, it becomes a clock divider now. And I think, is it this one? Yep. So I'll bring this up. slight kind of tremor to it and I can change the division it just gives you a sub octave generation from your input to newt so square wave obviously because it's a logic module it's kind of trying to output gates and then if you go to the flashing ones you get like thirds and fifths in that other sine wave again. So, like I say, you just get more stuff out from stuff you already have. And that is sweet in so few HP. Thanks, mate. So then finally with A-Logic, you are able to combine signals at audio rates and kind of derive new ones. Uh, you can get the sum, i.e. add the two things together, uh, which is cool if you've got kind of um, like two independent LFOs running and you literally want to sum them together to get the kind of beating frequency of them and then send that to one destination like a filter. But as I say, I mean, this is designed to work at audio rates. Uh, so we can do it with CV, but we can do it with audio. So what I've done is I've fed a shapeshifter into this top one and then the Dixie 2 into this bottom one. And if I get a sum, you can just hear the summed output of them, making a kind of harmonious sound. Difference sounds much as the same. However, maximum and minimum do not. You get kind of a like ring modded sort of like, yeah, discordant kind of AM mad thing with lots of fuzz and grit. And then of course, like the tone comes from like the interval and how they're playing against each other. God damn. delay to that, shall I? Someone had to. <laughs> That's the echo phone. Madness. 
So I hope you're curious to try logic modules, the various ways of combining both CV, audio and gates to derive a third thing from two existing things. For me, I think it's pretty essential. I mean, if you're trying to build a groove box and you want to make it manageable for yourself, then you need to be able to derive additional signals at a whim automatically, um, whilst you're busy kind of creating the patterns that these are based off of. Um, so whether you have one of these or loads of these, you need something like this, um, you know, or this exact thing. One just slight caveat, when I was playing around with the Pico Logic modules, I discovered that they didn't get triggered successfully by everything. Um, to give you two examples, the Make Noise Tempe and the Tip Top Audio Circadian Rhythms do not fire the Pico Logic. They do not, it just does not logicify them. However, the Euclidean Circles and the Rotating Clock Divider, uh, the output of Maths as well, and the Clock Output of Rainmaker, for example, all of these do absolutely fine work with it. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, it was something that I encountered. So yes, Logic. Stuff for free from things you already have. Peace.